we're ready. Okay. I'm just turning everything on now. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. I am <clears throat> ready. So, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, that was a lot of fun. I just got off the Skype. Can you say that, off the Skype? I just got off the Skype with Adam of the Expats Podcast. Adam of the Expats Podcast? That's this guy, here. Hi, I'm Adam from the Expats Podcast. And that's Teddy from Where's Teddy Now? And we had a great little talk about uh, our experiences as a family traveling around the world with our daughter, Elliot, and my wife, Tina. And uh, he was interested in some of the, um, the places we'd gone and some of the experiences we'd had, but mostly uh, interested about the, um, any advice we could give and, and, and how travel impacts a family as they go in about uh, in their travels around the world. I guess we are, and we appreciate this. We are very unique in being able to take a year off at a time. It was a great chance to talk a little bit about our experiences and our motivations. What did we talk about? Well, a lot. Uprooted your family and taken them to parts unknown. How did you even arrive at the decision to do that? Well, we both are travelers, my wife and I. I'd had a lot more experience than her. I'd been to, I don't know, 25 countries by then, and she'd lived abroad in France as a an exchange university student. We, um, we both wanted to do some traveling and my wife had the great idea to uh, get us onto what they call a deferred leave program with our respective boards of education whereby we can pay into, um, into the system for three years or four years or five years or even two years and then take the third or fourth or fifth or second year off on, on a, a deferred salary. So we both want to travel Tina came up with the plan for how to do it, and we made it so. What other considerations were there, you know, knowing that you've got kids that you wanted to bring with you? How were they going to be educated while you were traveling? You, you mentioned the language uh, barriers that may or may not have existed. That would be one of the biggest things holding parents back is this fear. Let's talk a little bit about where it is you guys decided to travel. Where did you stay? Did any particular one rise to the top? What did uh, being together for you know almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week, do for you and your relationship with Elliot? And what about uh, what about time alone for you and your partner? What are what would you say are some of the uh, the highlights? Were you highly nomadic, or did you sort of find a home base in each country? You've done this once. You're going to do it again, right? What is something that you'd wish you'd known before your first trip, and that you're going to maybe apply to this trip? How long are you going to go for, and what what uh, countries do you guys still want to visit? And what, what's the rationale behind the the countries you're considering? So how were Canadians regarded by the people that you met? I'm curious to know. You know, what kind of advice would you give to people who are maybe doing the deferred salary thing? definitely came out of your uh, strength and in our uh, relationships. It takes a lot of work and, and I won't fool you. I love Airbnb. I've heard that travel can be really, really tough in a family and oh, what's the one I'm thinking, what's the party island in Greece? If you've been to Europe, you know this. You, you bring your kids to bars and, and cafes and, and everything else. We love food. The education was the easy part. A month is a minimum and you don't get to know a place in a month. I have an expression I use with my kids is uh, don't let life get in the way of an education. Trip planning has been a moving target. So we're on to plan three right now. She looks at me in a very correct pose and says, Bonjour, monsieur. And I said, ah, oh, don't. I've got to say, there, there's, um, there's that old saw about how, uh, how French are all stuffy and, and rude and everything else. Mr. Schengen doesn't like us remaining there for more than 90 days, so we'll go and reset the timer. Japan, my daughter wants to go. We did meet a lot of Americans who uh, feigned Canadian citizenship. People are naturally curious about where we're from. And this is a tangent. As a teacher, I go off on tangents a lot. Uh, I have the intense craving for fresh bread, uh, feta cheese, 
uh, a fresh tomato, and olive oil for my breakfast. I have to admit, I'm, I'm more than a little jealous. Well now, you know what you have to do. Just yeah. do it. That is amazing, and I'm, I'm definitely overusing the word, but I will definitely invite you back on the expats. Thanks so much, Adam. Take care, and uh, thanks for the chat. Have a great day, Ted. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> So that is Adam Rosenhart out of um, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. He is the author of the podcast, the Expats Podcast, and I'll have some links to that in uh, my show notes down below as well. Awesome chat. I had a lot of fun with that. Cheers, guys. Oh, that must have been amazing. The word amazing could be easily overused. That's amazing. That is amazing. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, that must have been amazing. It was absolutely amazing.